the uh, ET Catawba one. Uh, what we're using is a size 8 CS10 slash 1 cartridge bark leaf hood. That's a four extra long hood. That's the classic salmon fly head. And what I'm doing is I'm closing the double back wire here and I'm using a, a heavier thread, Flymaster Plus is what I'm using, so that uh, when I wrap the lead on this thing, I don't have to spend all day long getting the lead, lead wrapped up. So I'm gonna advance my thread down into the bend of this hook, right over the top of the, uh, the hook ball. So pretty far down into the bend of this hook. And uh, we're gonna take a, a single goose bead. And this is the, the single spine that sticks out the back of the catalpa one. And we're gonna tie that in place. Roll that up on top of the hook right there. Wrap right down the stem. Okay, and then we're going to advance forward to right where the end of the double back wire is. And that's going to be our tying point for most of the back of this fly. We're going to want, this is a 38, 0.030 or 0.035, either one. Um, lead and I'm going to tie a strip of this lead down the top and a strip down the bottom. The reason we're not wrapping the lead around this is that the overhand knot weave has a tendency to make things wide and flat and so in order to uh, get an oval worm we're going to start with a platform that's shallow and tall. We'll take this lead and we'll wrap it down right on the top of the hood. I get down about three quarters of the way. I'll kind of do an estimate of where I want the lead to end. Pinch it off and I'll go ahead and pinch this end flat too. That way we're not just jumping off of a step right down there at the end. And you can take your flat bill pliers and just squeeze like that and it'll center your lead back up on, on the top of your hook. So, get that wrapped down real good. We'll advance back to the front. Turn this over. Cut a small piece of lead off here. And we'll repeat the step on the bottom. Do you say you do it on top and bottom of it to make your hook, make your your platform shallow and tall? Okay, okay. Because I've done mine side to side to make it narrow and wide. Well, the problem is the overhand knot weave is already going to make it flat and wide. Oh, oh. And in order okay. to get an oval, in order to get an oval, you need a shallow, tall platform. Okay, I see what you're doing. Yeah. Well, I wasn't working with that that weave yet. Offset the, the, the wide flatness that, that the overhand knot weave gives us. Okay, snip that off. Squeeze a little bit flat on the bottom there. Get the leg centered. And I always cement this real good. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and wrap back to the back because we're going to tie in our uh, Just get a good glob of that and just soak yeah. that thread right there. It's just to hold that platform in place. You ready to take it home? 
No, I'm a big Oh, okay. Now, the next step, of course, is to take our chartreuse and black vernil. And we're going to put the two ends together there. And just stretch. We need about 10 inches to do this fly. Nip that off. On this fly, it's important to tie the, the light one down the front side. You have two loops, a light one opposite a dark one. So, um, in order for our feather to start through the first scene, we need to actually, on this fly, it makes a difference that we, that we start with the light one on the inside. We're going to just walk that down the side of the hook so it follows the curvature of the hook. Tie the light one on the inside. Tie the dark one on the outside. Stop right there, and we're going to take one of our super saddle feathers here, those long whitened feathers. We're going to select a nice long one that's uniform out of here. It takes a fairly long feather to, uh, to do this fly, so... That looks like a good one right there. What I want to do is come down here on the end and strip off about three eighths of an inch of this. And I'm going to tie it in on edge with the shiny side going towards the eye of the hook, right in the middle of that open area that we just stripped. So we got half the of the the bared stem still sticking out back there and that's so we won't wind up with a sprig sticking out the back making the fly and uh, advance our thread up to the front and next what we need is just a piece of open cell foam I cut this open cell foam out of an air conditioning filter but you can find electronics packed in it uh, some kitchen sponges made out of a little closer cell than this one. But as long as it's an open cell phone, uh, it'll all work. If you're in doubt, Larva Lace sells a phone called Larva Lace Wet Fly, which is all this same phone that's already pre-cut and everything for you that you can order from them. So you can't find a source for some or something, that's a place you can get it at. We're not trying to really build the body up. We're just trying to provide a seat for the, for the overhand knots and to smooth out any of the unevennesses made by tying the vernil down there and going back and forth. This will make a nice smooth platform for us to do the overhand weaving. It's just open cell phone. We'll go ahead and clip that open cell phone and, t and we're going to tie off right here. And once again, we we'll make the light over the dark, up through the loop, put the dark one on top and the light one on the bottom. Draw your slack out and you get down pretty close. 
Just give it a sink. It's always the light went over the dark one. Up through. Put the dark one on top and the light one on the bottom. Get your slack out of it. Get it right next to the other one and give it a sandwich. <clears throat> we're going to do as many overhead knots as it takes to get up to the tying point here where the foam ended. That foam ended right where the double back wire on these salmon hooks stops. So the double back wire portion is left for our head spins. It sinks, but it sinks very, very slowly. And one of the reasons we put the lead on there is because the caterpillar doesn't float. But with that amount of hackle on there, you got to have something on there that ain't going to sink. When you're doing this overhand knot, you know, if it doesn't line up exactly where you want it, just give it a tweak. Okay? Because you're watching over the top of it, and you can see whether that line is, you know, in line or not. If it's not, just give it a tweak to the left or the right until it is in line. I've got to where I don't have to do that very often. I've done so many of these. Yeah. Hey, hey, buddy. That yeah, yeah, I'm taking a tip about that. I, 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 I hit it set out, and I don't know what happened to it. What, what do you need? I needed some fine tip. What's that? I got it. I took it out of one of those packages. <laughs> we're not going to use that much anymore. Huh? Okay. Now what we want to do is restart our thread and we're going to hey, use the six off the thread and restart. Wrap your six off thread right up next to the shoulder of your body there. We'll tie these off one side at a time. Bring your thread from behind and let it pull it into position. That way you won't wind up with a bunch of extra vernil filling up our, our head space. Come down here with your points and your scissors and get him lift off. Don't forget to save your access for those cap spots that we tied. Now the first cap spiders you I saw you tie quite a while ago. You didn't use that for Neil. You had something else you used. In fact, it looked like a striped body. You remember that? Which Neil here? Cap spiders. I can remember tying. I tied the ultra Neil originally because I hadn't discovered for Neil yet. Uh, Seemed like you put some kind of a rib on. No. Don't remember that? Okay, maybe I dreamed that, or maybe it was mine. Might have been somebody else. Might have been my version. It wasn't mine. Okay. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring him to life. And if you look along the yellow, there you'll see these little dark triangles where the black comes to a point. That's actually the seam of this. And all we're going to do is take that hackle and connect the dots. And if you do that, what you're doing is you're putting the seam of the hackle right down in the seam of the vernil so the fish won't break it as easy. And it makes the fly, of course, symmetrical. All those seams are pretty much equidistant apart. And that fly just sort of comes to life when you do that. Time off. 
Okay. Now we're going to let out a bunch of our thread here. We're going to make a spinning loop for the head. Always go all the way around your thread there to close the top of that loop or your material that you put in there will fall out the top when you're making a spinning loop. Put your brass spinning loop to go in there. What we want to use for the, for the head is squirrel dubbing. Squirrel dubbing has the guard hairs for squirrel are, are pretty stiff in comparison to rabbit or possum or the softer uh, dubbings. And that's what we want because we want to make a fur hackle is what we're trying to make here. So we're going to make that work to our advantage. And you want to come take this and just tease it out. Okay, so if you can see how it's kind of thin, got it teased out, and I'll put it right between that loop, slide it up to the top there. A little more. Tease it out real good. up in that loop. <coughs> Grab your thread down here, give it a spin, and it'll start to spin that up. Now I want to come over here. I don't want to pull on this. I just gently stroke off the, the fibers that didn't get caught. Okay? Because I don't want them to wad up and make this into a noodle. Now I'm going to go give it another spin. Let it spin up good and tight. And you can see that what we have here is a fur hackle. Okay? What size is this this morning? This is a size 8. CS10-1 Bart Leet Salmon Hook. And we'll grab it down here. Now here's a real important point to this fly. I have so many people come say, I tied that fly and it worked out just right, but somehow it just doesn't look right. I've had people conclaves all the time doing this. But what it is, is they're not wrapping the head properly. And as a result, the head, there's a gap in the head sticking out. What we want to do is when we start wrapping this, wrap behind the wrap before. Because it's going to want to slide forward when you start. And what we want is a big puffy head. Okay? And then when i got just a little bit left, I'll stroke this back, make a wrap over the middle of it, and another wrap or two around the end, and this head will be properly shaped. But if you start just wrapping it forward, you're going to have a gap and then the head. And it's not going to look properly at all. And that's where they all, every one of them that's ever come told me that. I look at it and immediately say, it's because you're not wrapping the head right. He said, I retired. I don't even nervous. I don't like that. It didn't work much. We don't want to be in the state. We'll tie that off. 